Hello, everyone, and welcome to another exciting episode of Common Sense with Dr. Ben Carson. I'm your host, Ben Carson. And, you know, we want to talk a little bit about something that's very important, cancel culture. My co-host for this uh, series, this is actually going to be a series, is John Schneider, who, as some of you may know, was the founder of Papa John's Pizza, is a tremendous entrepreneur and a great friend. We also have with us today uh, Bob Inunwe, who is the CEO of Goya Foods, and you've probably seen him on television a number of times on all kinds of subjects. He's a man of great courage. And the other face everybody knows is John Voigt, uh, one of the, the great actors in Hollywood history, uh, Midnight Cowboy, Pearl Harbor, National Treasure, uh, Coming Home, got, I think, an Emmy for that, and um, Enemy of the State, received the National Medal of the Arts, and the list goes on and on. And all of us are going to be engaged today and talking about a phenomenon that I think we've all recognized is a problem, and that is cancel culture. It kind of started with political correctness. And uh, there are many of us who warned that if we didn't snip it in the bud, that it would grow. And it has. And it has morphed into wokeness. And then it has morphed into a creature that actually has teeth, which are cancel culture, which actually will disenfranchise people, take away people's means of living. And um, most insidiously, it discourages people from talking. People are afraid to talk. They're afraid they may say the wrong thing. They may use the wrong pronoun and create problems for themselves and everybody else. There was a saying when I was a child, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. I don't think they teach that to kids anymore. I think it's just the opposite now. You gotta have your little safe space because somebody might call you something or say something that injures your sensitivities. How is it possible for a nation for a society to be strong when everybody is so vulnerable to things like words. And uh, some people think that resistance is futile. It's not refutable, it's not futile, but it does take courage. And that's what we hope to inspire through these series of talks, people to have the courage to actually stand up and say what they believe, because our First Amendment rights were fought by many people, many of whom gave their lives. And it would be a very great dishonor to them if we yield to all of this. So today we're going to be discussing this persistent phenomenon of cancel culture. And um, I want to start by asking each of our guests, why is cancel culture so harmful to us. Well, thank you, Ben, and thanks for having me, and John, and Bob, pleasure to be with you today. Um, it's, it's, I think, an instrument of the left to further divide the country, that, you know, if your ideology doesn't fit um, with the elite left or the elite left media, uh, then they, they find some, you know, offity or limitation in your character, or in my case, I'll just completely mischaracterize and fabricate it, uh, to your point, to shut me up or to keep me or my conservative values or uh, basically my courage, my strength, my willpower to keep me from saying what I think needs to be said. So I think it's an instrument of the left to um, especially have notoriety or, or resources or influence to kind of shut us down. Let's go with the other, John. Yeah, well. Wow. Uh, we're uh, we're in a time when um, anyone who is uh, on the side of truth and good and God uh, is being targeted because we're dangerous to 
people who want to take over people's minds and uh, and uh, take away freedom of speech and all the freedoms that we've been given in this great country. So we're dangerous to them to the degree that we stand for something that uh, that impedes their progress and and they find every way they can to bring us down. So it's a it's a war we're we're in, and um, and I and I th like to think on the positive side. You you, you feel so. Um, some people feel like we're, I'm I'm alone. I'm without help. With, but uh, you know, God is in His seat, and and uh, there's been, uh, and so we're not alone. And we have this little group of people, this, the, the four of us are an example of uh, people who have many friends and stand for things and we are carrying on and we have a smile on our faces and we keep going and we know that truth will prevail. So we're, we're helpful to, to other folks. And, uh, and, I, and, and anyway, I, but the reason why we're being targeted is because we're, we represent a certain set of values. Our country has given us a great set of values. Uh, our constitution, our founding documents are Amen. amazing gifts and we stand for them. And, uh, and those gifts will, will prevail. And they are, uh, you know, they are, they're what they want to take down. So we're standing in the way of that. And we're very proud to do that. Wonderful. And Bob? Yeah, you know, it is surreal to be in the same room with you all. And the only reason I'm here is because the Holy Spirit. You know, I, I uh, was in the White House on July 9th of 2020, and I uttered the word blessed at Donald Trump in the same sentence. Uh, but that word was put on my lips by the Holy Spirit. And so uh, I believe, you know, all of us have been called. Uh, like they say in the movie, Sound of Freedom, you know, God calls you, you, you cannot hesitate. But uh, Dr. Carson, when uh, you have mentioned before that this just didn't pop up, this cancel culture. 1963, as you said, they read into Congress the basically the, the communist uh, playbook and what, how we're we going to uh, move away from God, destroy the family, attack the child, you know, attack the, the tenets of, of our society. And so this has been in the work for 60 years. Yeah. And so it's only really reared its ugly head in a, in a strong way because we're under attack, but it's not lost because the Holy Spirit has said, look, enough is enough. You know, I, we have to, we're in a spiritual war. We have to move toward God and not away from God. And I and I think, with, just going back to the Sound of Freedom movie, uh, which we just, just came out with, the timing wasn't a few years ago. Uh, the timing what was is now. I mean, when uh, the, the, the talk about child trafficking and the breakdown of the family, the uh, Tim Ballard went before Congress to talk about this play and in April of this year, Tara Lee wrote us, a whistleblower for HS, HSS, um, uh, HS, uh, sorry, HHS, Health and Human Services, and ORR, the Office of Refugee Resettlement. She said that there's, you know, we've lost 85,000 children uh, in this country because we're going, you know, all of a sudden this new administration comes in and People are pouring over the border, and they can't be fast enough. But Sarah says, hey, we got to bring these kids in faster so that we can give them to sponsors so that they can be uh, ex exploited. Filmed for pornography, sex trafficked, slave trafficked. You know, this is a complete uh, breakdown of our society. And what you just got to follow the money. The Gulf Cartel in Mexico is an $80 billion business. Human trafficking around the world is a $250 billion business. There's just too much money behind it. And not, you can't not see that 
our government, the Mexican government, other governments are complicit in this because you just got to leave the, the, to the money. The same thing with, uh, I believe, the, the vaccination uh, thing, whole thing. Uh, so many things lead to that. But it's cancel culture for me is communism. And communism, not, you know, text, but for communism where it's a few controlling the money. They don't give a crap about any of us. They want to keep Latinos down. They want to keep uh, the black community down, all minorities down. I mean, you've been called, Dr. Carson, a white supremacist. Latinos, they say that we hold white supremacist values. It's, it's about attacking, hating, and dividing the, the Cuban poet, uh, Marti, Jose Marti said, "There's a those there are those who are born to love and build, others to hate and destroy, and but we cannot allow the hate and destruction division to, uh, and and in this war we have some great soldiers, and uh, it's great to see this movie Sound of Freedom come out. And it's under attack because it's good, and anything that is when you mention God, it's going to become under attack. But I think we're going to start winning this war. The pendulum is going to swing." Yeah. John, uh, let me just ask you, uh, in Hollywood, you know, uh, J.K. Rowling uh, got in trouble for tweeting that, quote, people who menstruate are women. Um, Dr. Seuss, Gina Carano for social media posts comparing Nazi Germany to the political climate. I mean, basically, you have to toe the line in Hollywood. Uh, or bad things happen. What's what's been your experience with that? Well, I I think that everybody knows where I stand, and uh, and uh, I, I don't. I I feel all of these things are this this uh, attempt to to shut down people's voices. We're telling the truth is uh, you know it's it's an epidemic of this, and I think it's very properly characterized. It started with, with communism, uh, and the 60s was a place where it blossomed, and then they've had very great success, and a lot of these people found that it was easy to get into the, our schools, it was easy to get in, into the press. Somehow they captured the press. Uh, and, and of course, anybody who says anything out of line uh, for them is going to be attacked. Now, those, I'm very glad to see that J.K. Rowling stood up and told the truth about those areas. And, uh, and I'm very grateful for everyone who stands up and tells the truth. And eventually, I, th that's going to be the way things get taken care of. Uh, I wanted to say a word about Sound of Freedom, because uh, I, I, first of all, to congratulate uh, Bob and and uh, and and say what a wonderful thing that was. The story is being told about how you stood up and and protected that uh, that film. And I want to say, as an actor and an artist, I want I have to say it's it's beautifully done. It's a wonderful film. It's a great script, beautifully told story, uh, very compelling. Uh, very necessary, of course, at this time, but beautifully done. The actors are, every one, fantastic, and Jim Caviezel is wonderful in it, magnificent, really. And, uh, and so it's a, great, it's a great movie moment. Uh, and it was protected by this man who, who was with us, and, uh, and several other people stepped up in order that this movie is coming forth, and the people are responding to it. So, uh, so it's it's a, it's a wonderful movie, and uh, and it's having its success now, and it's doing an awful lot of good. And anybody who attacks this film is attacking children. Uh, it's it's it seems almost insane, and and it is insane, in fact. Yeah, cancel culture working hard trying to suppress the movie, and the more they try to suppress it, it seems like the bigger it gets. So you can't you can't suppress the truth for long. Exactly right. So, um, and and those people who are unaware of, of or hiding from the battle that's going on, uh, and not stepping up, and, and being confused about what's all the, the the damage that's being done on our television sets and radios, uh, 
where they're getting, you know, this Manchurian candidate society that we're becoming, uh, those people can see this movie and they can see the truth uh, about all of this and it'll make a big, big difference in, in lots and lots of ways. Um, so congratulations, Bob, congratulations. Well, John Schneider, you've certainly experienced cancel culture. Uh, they try to malign your character, call you a racist, and it, it, it actually uh, had a, an impact. Can you tell us a little bit about that? And, you know, and I can say, you know, I know this man, he's the last thing on earth away from a racist. And, um, you know, I've been to his home. I've seen uh, numerous black people there, some of whom were liberals. And they love them too. So what about your crap? <laughs> you get your learning from your burning, don't you, in this kind of situation. But um, the, when this all happened, um, I kind of laughed because of the, um, the, the respect and dignity I have for um, you know, all, all my fellow men and women. And so I kind of thought, well, you know, good luck with that one. And, um, you know, you get the media, you get enough clicks, you get social media at the time, Twitter uh, was, you know, in a false uh, narrative and then they would add clicks to it. And they, you know, they kind of blew it up. Um, and it was a shame, a lot of people, uh, we had a great team, a great company, and a lot of people that really, uh, it didn't do me any good, but it really hurt the people that I love, my employees. Um, but it's it's interesting. They they do these things, and they're trying to tear your your character, the the fabric of your being apart. They're they're trying to weaken you, and, and can you can have you come over to the dark side of not truth, not love, not kindness? And this whole ordeal is nothing but made me more strong in my convictions and. Um, more faith in a higher power and that light will overcome darkness and good will prevail over evil and uh, this will come out but it's it's strengthened my faith and and my um, my convictions on mutual kindness respect dignity love and thoughtfulness and compassion and bliss it's actually strengthened those attributes in my character by having to go through this with that being said I don't want to go through it again <laughs> <laughs> I can understand that but we just have to be strong and, and fight back. And, you know, uh, Bob, uh, they tried to cancel you because you said something good about Donald Trump. Yeah, you know, it was, it was funny because, uh, you know, I was there with this during COVID. Uh, we were working because we're an essential business. But, you know, work is essential. We need a reason to get up every day. God, family, work. And, and fortunately, that's the tenets of, of the Latino communities, God, family, work. And I think that's going to be a big uh, point of uh, contention for the upcoming election. And this election is, is going to be very important. But, you know, holding those values as key is, is going to um, allow me that, that Mike, our community did not uh, go against us. Um, and and uh, in fact, the boycott was started. Um, and, you know, we were there to offer a couple million pounds of food. We ended up with four and a half million pounds that year. And uh, we wanted to make that gift to the, uh, you know, to the chief executive. And uh, also they were having me on this commission to uh, uh, the White House Commission on Hispanic Prosperity. But again, the word blessed came on my lips uh, from the Holy Spirit. And again, once you mention God, uh, that pisses off a lot of people, and it goes against the narrative and, and uh, of that. And and so, again, the timing of this, I believe, you know, the cancel culture reared its ugly head, but th this Holy Spirit is joined in, in this in this uh, holy war uh, that we're in, and. Uh, this is not only happening in this country, it's around the world. In Spain, uh, I have a Spanish passport also. And in, in Spain, at 12 years old, you can transition, a child can transition without parental interference. So this is not just the United States, this is a new world order where evil you know, is at work. And uh, this cancel culture is just a, a mechanism to hate and, and divide. 
But um, I just wanted to say quickly, I'm sorry, is, you know, this movie, Sound of Freedom, again, uh, Tim Ballard goes in and saves, he saved them. He saves thousands of kids. But in this one particular movie, he goes to save one child. And it just highlights the fact that every single life is of value. And, you know, you don't have to be a Tim Ballard and, and be the superhero to go in and risk his life, risk his family. You, each one of us, uh, I have 14 grandkids. I have six kids. And my, my I worry about my grandkids because... They're hurting themselves. They're bullying each other. There's a lot of mental health problems because no one has the courage to stand up and say, if someone's being bullied, hey, leave her alone, leave him alone. We can be superheroes ourselves. If we look beyond the selfie, we look beyond the, the camera or the, this phone. And to other people's, love your neighbors as yourself. That awareness, that courage, to reach out and help someone else is going to really change the world. That's what, we, that's what we're called to do, I believe, by the Holy Spirit, is to you know, love your neighbor as yourself. That's the key. Uh, the actual culture is the opposite of that. That's completely the opposite. Instead of love your neighbor, cancel your neighbor if they don't mm -hmm. agree with you. But uh, cancel culture is also used as a cudgel to create uniformity of thought and uniformity of speech. And isn't that really antithetical to who we are as a nation? What do you all think? Well, of course it is. Uh, freedom of speech, what a wonderful thing. You know, when the, our, our, our founding fathers are uh, quite, quite amazing energies. It's really been such a blessing uh, that we have had this country based on all of those principles and we have those documents. And of course, uh, the Constitution, this amazing document, uh, is being attacked by the cancel culture, this group of people who want to take over and, and uh, have everyone in control. And... Uh, and and we as a as an, an identity of the United States, we have this, this. This runs through our blood. We know those people like this group of us. We know what the gift was that was given, and it was a it was a gift given not only just to us, but to the entire world. Uh, when this document came forward, when these documents came forward, it caused a an eruption throughout the world of righteousness in some way. And, uh, and if we hold on to these values, and just like we hold on to the Bible or the truths from the various countries around the world, the different religions, they, each, each country has a little something to give to us all. And uh, so we have some strength throughout the world. People uh, are, can share these values. And, uh, and anyway, I, I, I think that we're going to uh, prevail as the truth has always prevailed. When you look back at all these battles that were fought be, before our generation, uh, the truth always finally prevailed. And there were dark moments, very dark moments. Uh, in my lifetime, the World War II was fought. And can you imagine what people thought at that time? Uh, uh, the the response was extraordinary that we were able to overtake this dark force and we saw it happen you know when once it turned uh, it didn't take very long for that war to be completed and for the victory to come to the righteous uh, so we're in the same situation now we have to look uh, we we certainly have the uh, uh, the uh, the help of extraordinary people like yourselves, you guys, uh, are coming forward and showing the way. And there's so many people, just, uh, just all the good people of the world are, are, are needing a little bit of help these days to, to get on the positive side. But we're going to win this. There is no question that we're going to win, uh, because I read the last chapter, and I know what, how the story ends. But 
Uh, and we are going to have some difficulty in the meantime. But what we have to remember as Americans, I think, is that this place is that shiny city on the hill. Even though we have so many people who are trying to denigrate our nation and say how horrible it is, why is it that there's so many people still trying to get in here? Why aren't they trying to leave? Obviously, we have something that's very worthwhile, and it's called liberty and freedom. And we have to remember that you cannot be the land of the free if you're not the home of the brave. And we have brave individuals here. I want to thank each of you for being on the program today. And uh, remember to go to Stitcher, go to Spotify, go to Apple Podcasts. Make sure you don't miss any of the episodes. Tell your friends, neighbors, rate us, review us. And remember what you've heard here today and how you can be a part of it. And also remember the four cornerstones. Faith, liberty, community, and life. We'll see you next week.